Kia ora. In this video, I will provide a brief overview of the New Zealand school system. We will look at the types of schools in New Zealand, the year level systems and how schools are divided up, assessment, the New Zealand curriculum, NCEA, what a New Zealand classroom looks like and feels like, discipline and homework. Firstly, there are three different types of schools in New Zealand. There are public or state schools, state integrated schools, which could include special character faith-based schools, and private schools. In New Zealand, the school year begins in late January and finishes in December. It is divided into four terms of about 10 weeks each, with two weeks of holidays between each term and six weeks of summer holidays in December and January. A child begins school when they are five years old and finish when they are about 18 years old. This process is divided up by year levels, from year zero to year 13. Primary school is from year zero to six. Intermediate school is from year seven to eight. However, some schools are what we call a full primary from years zero to eight. And high school is from years nine to 13. Some schools are just primary schools or high schools, but other schools follow through all the way from year zero to year 13. Schools in New Zealand usually have between 100 students and 2000 students. Assessment in New Zealand is based on the New Zealand curriculum and from year 0 to 10 this is low stakes assessment. The assessment data is used to inform teaching and learning and can be reported on, however it does not have a big impact on the child's future pathways. During years 11 to 13 students complete NCEA levels 1, 2 and 3. This assessment is more high stakes and results from this can be used by universities or employers to inform decision making. The New Zealand curriculum is divided into eight essential learning areas, which all schools must offer. These are English, the arts, including visual art, drama, dance and music, health and physical education, learning languages. This one, however, is not essential for all schools to offer at all year levels. Mathematics and statistics, science, social science and technology. Each learning area is divided into eight levels that contain a number of different achievement objectives. The New Zealand curriculum is not prescriptive, but rather provides a framework that allows schools and teachers to be flexible with learning content and context, provided that they cover the achievement objectives. NCEA is our National Certificate of Educational Achievement. It is divided into levels one, two and three, and usually completed during years 11 to 13 of high school. It is a standards-based system where subjects offer a number of different standards that cover a range of skills. Students receive a number of credits for each standard passed and the students need to gain a certain number of credits overall to achieve each NCEA level. Students can be assessed through internal assessment, which is prepared and marked by the school. And some work from each assessment can be moderated each year by the New Zealand Qualifications Authority to ensure assessment is meeting the standard. There is also external assessment, which is taken in the form of national exams at the end of the school year. These are marked and moderated by the New Zealand Qualifications Authority. So what does a New Zealand classroom look like? Many schools and classrooms in New Zealand have adopted a modern learning environment. This is generally categorised by open and flexible spaces, breakout rooms and various types of furniture. This is designed to allow for collaboration and group work, which is a big part of the New Zealand classroom. Most schools in New Zealand have a compulsory uniform that students wear every day. Use of digital devices for learning are becoming more and more important in New Zealand schools. Some schools have school-owned devices for students to use and other schools have bring-your-own-device policies, where students are required to buy and bring their own device to school. The use of digital technologies for learning is becoming an increasingly important part of the New Zealand classroom. If you looked into a New Zealand classroom almost anywhere in the country, you would notice that it is very multicultural. This fact allows the New Zealand classroom to be a place of rich learning, as students from all cultures are encouraged to share and explore their personal values, cultures and heritages. Let's take a look now at what a New Zealand classroom feels like. Firstly, it should feel like a safe space for students to be in. This means that students should feel safe to take risks and make mistakes without fear of the teacher or other students putting them down. 
It also means that teachers are active encouragers of students and work to create a space where students can work together in groups to collaborate in their learning, where ideas are shared and respected. Most importantly, positive relationships should be the backbone of a New Zealand classroom. Whenona tanga. Teachers actively get to know their students, their interests and passions, as well as their strengths and weaknesses. This helps the teacher to adapt content to their students' specific needs and interests, which in turn helps the student to relate to their learning and enjoy a good relationship with their teacher, because they know that the teacher really cares for them and wants the best for them. So what about discipline in a New Zealand classroom? Every classroom is different and kids will always be kids. However, the process of dealing with misbehaviour is pretty similar across all schools. In the first place, teachers are taught to focus on the positives, to constantly be praising good behaviour rather than always focusing on negative behaviour. This provides encouragement for the students to continue in good behaviour patterns. If students' behaviour is particularly unacceptable in the classroom, schools may have a referral system where students are removed from the class. However, these students are always followed up with a restorative justice meeting or the like with the dean or the classroom teacher, or if there's been an incident involving a number of students, all parties will be present to discuss the situation, talk about how they felt, ask questions, and work together to resolve the conflict. Next, let's talk about homework. The amount of homework and type of homework varies between schools. Some schools have a no homework policy where teachers cannot assign homework and some schools do allow homework to be set by the classroom teacher. If students do have homework, this would usually take between 15 minutes and three hours to complete for all subjects combined, depending on the year level. New Zealand students are often very busy after school as they are involved in playing sports or music or taking part in cultural clubs or youth groups, so they don't always have a lot of time at home to complete homework, which a lot of teachers and schools acknowledge. I'd like to leave you with a whakatoki, a Māori proverb. No te roro, nāko te roro, ka ora ai te iwi. With your food basket and my food basket, everyone will have enough. New Zealand has a unique partnership between the people of the land, the Māori and the Crown, which is laid out in the Treaty of Waitangi. Everyone has the responsibility to work together for the good of all, and this is particularly evident in the New Zealand school system. I hope that this video has been a helpful overview of the New Zealand school system. I have also attached a number of links in the description to websites for further reading. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section below.